Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you so much for coming today to join us for one of our absolute favorite things here at NCSSM, Dr. Miller's reading of How the Grinch Stole Christmas. So I'm Kim Logan. I'm the constituent relations director here and the one who's been stalking you all on Facebook. So I'd just like to personally say that um, I'm going to be all thrilled that everyone could come and be with us today. So without further ado, Dr. Miller and How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This seems to be proof that you might graduate, but you never grow up. Can <laughs> 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 slide up? I don't play. Once upon a time, I could read this without these. Uh, and, and now I can't. And, and, and now I, 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 my deafness is finally become even apparent to me, and, and so that I have hearing aids so that I can hear myself read it. I have become the mechanical branch. <laughs> Down in Whoville, like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, now, please, don't ask me why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart and his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating, hating the hoos, staring down from his cave with a sour, grinchy frown at the warm, windy town. Oh, the warm lighted windows below the town. For he knew every room down in Hoover was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas, it's practically here. And then he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming, I must find some way to stop Christmas coming. But tomorrow, he knew all the who boy girls and boys would wake bright and early, they'd rush for their toys, and then, oh, then, oh, the noise. Noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, the noise, noise. <laughs> then the hoods, young and old, would sit down to a feast. And they feast, and they feast, and they feast, 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 feast. They would feast on who pudding. And who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. 
every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the who would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, 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 sing. <laughs> and the more the Grinch thought of this who Christmas sing, the more the Grinch thought, I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years, I put up with it now. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But <laughs> then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat, and he chuckled and plopped. <laughs> what a great, great, grinchy trick. With this coat and this hat, I look just like St. Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked round. But since reindeer are scarce, <laughs> there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? <laughs> the Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog, Max! And he took some red bread and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and he hitched up old Max. And then the Grinch said, Get out! The sleigh started down toward the homes where the hoos lay a snooze in the bed. All the windows were far, quiet snow in the air. All the windows were dreaming, sweet dreams, without pain. When he came to the first little house on the square, this is stop number one. The old Grinchy calls his, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney. A rather tight bin, but it sank to a sort of cringe. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, and he stuck his head out of the fireplace. With a little who stockings all on the road, these stockings are the first things to go. Then he slid and slunk with a smile <coughs> most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn, and plums, and he stopped them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags, one by one, up the chimney. 
And he swung to the ice box. He took the hoon's feast. He took the hoon pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took their last can of hoon hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, bring <laughs> the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shove. And he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw. A small, <laughs> little, Cindy. <laughs> it was not much more than <laughs> the Grinch had been caught by this tiny new daughter who got up out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Sandy Claus. Why? Why? Are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? <laughs> but you know, that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought of a lie and he thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot, no fake Santa Claus Why? There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. No, fix it up there. Then I'll bring it back here. And his fit food the chocolate. Then he patted her head, and he got her a drink, and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy <laughs> went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was the log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney himself, you liar. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that he left in the house was a crumb too small, even for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose house, leaving crumbs much too small for others, for other whose houses. It was quarter past dawn. All the people still a bed. All the people still a When he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the tags, the tinsel, the trimmings, and the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the hooves. He was graciously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open. <laughs> for a moment or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry. <laughs> There's a noise, that's a noise, the Grinch, that I simply must hear. And he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear, 
And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started to blow. Then it started to grow. But the sound, the sound, the sound wasn't sad. Wait, wait, wait. The sound sounded merry. It couldn't be so. But it was. Mary. Fairy. He stared down at Hoover. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every Hoover, down in Hoover, the tall and the small was singing without any presence at all. He, he, he hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How, how could it be so? It came without ribbons. It, it came without tags. It came without packages, boxes, bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzle was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved. Merry Christmas.